Good afternoon, everybody. This is your friendly neighborhood, Alwyn, once more. Today, we're going to do the cover boards. Now, I skipped a little bit ahead because, well, I didn't want you watching me cut holes and uh, cut boards and such because that's just a little bit boring, and I want to make these a little bit better for you. You're going to choose, depending on the size of the paper you're using, a board that will cover completely what you're looking to do. What you're, you want to have a little bit of an edge on the outside of your books. It's not lined up as well as it could be right now because it's not one full book. But you want it to have a little bit of an edge, just like most books, where the cover is going to have a little extra on, on the edges in front. Um, just remember the width of your paper because the way the spine sits on the back of the board you do, all you really need to do is make the width of your paper, the, the width of your board, the same width as your paper because the spine is going to push that front forward some. So you don't have to put an additional quarter inch on this side. I did put two, a quarter inch on each side of the paper up here for the fact that it allows. So this is an eight and a half by five and a half uh, pages, eight and a half by five and a half pages. So this is a nine by five and a half because the, spa the, the uh, spine pushes the back of the board forward, which brings you, brings this board forward about a quarter inch. So not too bad, not too hard. What you're gonna need here is a nice piece of solid wood. Make, make sure it's just nice hardwood that'll stand the test of time, it's dropped on the ground, things like that. Um, you'll need a wooden dowel. I use quarter inch. It's so simpler. It's cheap, about a buck fifty, depending on where you go. Maybe a little less, a little bit more. And you're going to cut out what I have here, about half inch to an inch uh, pieces. This is about an inch, yep. So these are about an inch. Some of them are a little bit longer. Um, you're going to cut out those little wood dowels. And then you'll need, of course, a hammer. Now, from here, you'll also need some wood glue. I use wood glue more than the better. I use wood glue instead of the uh, craft glue because it seals better into the wood itself and makes a nice, solid, um, clear uh, point. Um, and it, so if it comes out a little bit on this side, it's not going to cause any problems either. Um, once we get to a certain point, you also will need, once one side is dried, you'll need some sort of straight, some sort of razor. I'm using an X-Acto knife here. You can use um, your standard pocket knife. Um, you, you use this, um, a box knife, whatever works best for you. I like the handle on this so it can do it. And basically what you're going to use those for is once you run through, you're going to use them. Use it to cut off the excess like that. Now we'll get to that later. I'll show you that. Uh, but yeah, you're just going to get as close to the, the board as possible once this happens. I'm only doing it this part now because I don't, uh, I won't be able to show it at the end of this because once we run things through, the glue has to set and I can't, I'm not going to make you sit for 30 minutes to an hour to watch the glue dry before we get to that point. Once we do that, we'll, uh, you'll snip these off. You can take your standard snippers or a small saw, small hand saw, or a Dremel uh, cutting blade. Just remember, if you're doing the Dremel cutting blade, do it from the, in the this side of the board because you don't want to get too close to your supports and cut the supports on this end. Uh, that's another good reason to uh, route out channels uh, it'll number one lay it flatter and number two the less chance of cutting it into your supports so today I'm going to show you what you do with your supports now once you run once you uh, cut your boards into the sides you want you're going to run channels into this I use the router bit off of my Dremel so don't worry about it basically you're going to have 
you're going to drill, depending on the size of the thing, but I've got um, eight support sets here, so I needed eight holes down the hiss. You're going to run direct from there, out tra uh, standard uh, straight tra uh, channels. You're going to route those out, chip them out if you use uh, like to wood chip. That's perfectly fine, obviously a little more period. Um, and then you're going to do seven holes. Well, I am going to do seven holes. Depends on how many supports you make. Um, you're, you're going to do a diagonal crisscross pattern because once you run this through, it's going to come back out here. Once you run this to, through, you're going to run one side, one of the strings to one side and one to the other. And you're going to double up the strings through these holes. Now, this one only has seven because once I start doing that, they're going to become seven sets instead of uh, six double sets and one um, two uh, single set single strips now the first part of this pretty simple your when you do this I suggest taking some tape in this case I took some scotch tape and make sure you when you cut off the ends that you knotted with during your um, sewing phase before you do that put some tape on the end so that you can control how being able to get through here because this area right here will start coming apart unless it is secured obviously you know that you're not <laughs> not dumb um, first things first you start with one end and I will do this show you you're gonna come through here now on the back I have routed out this area I made a mistake because I wasn't paying attention I routed out this and then I realized you know I need the channels from this end to here and I channeled them not thinking so when you're doing your channels make sure you don't you do only the straight the straight channels in one on one side and your zigzag side flip it over and do the zigzag zigzag on the other side now you're gonna run through here you're going to come back up through here now once you run your, this channel and as you can see it comes through this one channel you don't want it too tight because you want to be, have some fat flex with it you're going to go back to the next set you're going to run this in and then this in now that'll get a little tight again these are quarter inch holes because i'm using the quarter inch dowel in this case, now you have two coming through the single part. And this one, you're going to take one over here and pull it through. Oops. Pull it through with the other. Now this becomes a new set instead. And the second one, you're going to take, run it through this set, and you're going to continue this down the same way. This is not that long of a video because it's not going to take that long to do so you're just going to pull that out make sure that as you're doing this you're leaving a little flexibility here so you want to leave a little bit of flex to it so that the uh bo the boards can close onto the book itself you might get it a little too tight and it's okay the pages the book will flex for you it's sometimes it's a little hard to push through but that's okay this is another reason why the tape helps it allows sort of an eyelet for it um, I'm running these through one side first and then I'll run them through the next side the the zigzags this way I can control it a little bit more I only showed you I only did it the other way to show you what you how you're gonna start everything now once you do this just takes a few minutes just pull it through again I'm not making it too tight yet um, once we get the uh, dowel uh, pieces in that'll start tightening things and then you can adjust your strings a little bit and again down here you're going to do the same thing you did with the the uh, other end and Try to make sure your routes on, on are all pretty straight. I didn't do so well. I moved around a little bit. 
It's all about beginning of learning things. Now sometimes these uh, don't want to go through, so you need to push them through a little sometimes. Alright, let's see here. There we go. Alright, and then finally, your other end. Alright, so now you're just going to continue the process down here like you did with the other before. Pretty simple. You're just running the supports through your holes to make sure that they are in the right positions. So as you can see, they're starting to come out on this side. You just continue the process through. I, there we go. Simple process. Maybe the next time I do uh, videos like this, I'll learn how to do the stop mo well not stop motion, but the uh, sp the uh, speeding through the videos. Whoops, got caught there. All right, just keep pulling through. Pull through. Pull through. And then pull through. Now, what you'll want to do, I should, again, shift these paper, shift it a little bit. Um, you might want to push these back out. All right. Now, it's sitting like this because I haven't cut these trip, these pieces off yet. Um, now you, once you get it here, just tighten the ones that you need. Make sure the book is completely closed as you do this so that it stays closed because you don't want it too tight because it will cause a little bit of a headache because it won't stay closed like it's supposed to. All right. Now, obviously, I haven't secured this stuff yet. Um, that's where the wooden dowels come in. Now, I use, to keep my stuff together, I have a little set of, I have a little, what my, I think this is supposed to be like a silverware holder for your drawers. But I use it for my catch-all, pencils, pieces, whatnot. The next part, you're going to take your draw dowel pieces that I have here. Uh, I did 14 of them, I believe. Um, seven, 14. I did enough, <laughs> I believe. Uh, yeah, 14 of them because I had seven holes to work with. In this case, what you're wanting to do is you're going to take your hammer and a dowel. And you're going to push it in. That one's a little big. But that one I used the wrong bit on. Um, the, t the glue will tighten it up. All right, so you're basically going to push these through as you can. They don't have to look pretty, obviously. Everything's here. Now, when you get to a certain point, you may have to, there we go, you may have to tack them a few times just to, or tap them, I should say, a few times. Um, some of them will be a little bit thicker than others just because of the way they were. There we go. Now, when you get to the second board, you'll have already cut off the, the uh, other pegs at this point. Don't worry about it because I'm just, I'm not worried about it because I'm trying to show you what I did before and what I will be, I am doing now. Alright. We are almost there. This is the simple part. It really is a simple process. There we go. And you're using the hammer just to get it as flat as you can. Again, this... This is going to sit here on this side for a little while because you want to leave it in this same position. Uh, you can use a book or whatnot. You want to leave it in this position so that when you're doing the gluing, you just have somewhere to go. Now, I would suggest underneath going ahead, I'll move this for a moment, and putting a paper towel or some napkins like I've got here. And putting them under there because you don't want to 
the glue dripping through to the bar, to, onto your craft table or whatever you're using. Just make sure that the spikes, uh, that your, your uh, pegs are not above this, not above your paper. You want them above the uh, pieces of below, the paper below. Open up your uh, glue. Now you're just going to take enough to fill in the hole. I use the wood glue because it will fill um, the hole pretty well. And it's made for, obviously, wood. The craft glue, it doesn't set quite right, in my opinion. So, using a, wood, a glue that works with the wood well will set it properly. Now, you may want to push the paper. You may want to push it down a little bit just to kind of mold it. I'll do this real quick. Now, once this dries, um, again, as we all know, uh, the glue will kind of come, come become a little bit clear. It will, uh, at this point, what I, what is in it will fill in those holes. I'm leaving that a little bit because I want to make sure that additional size hole, because I've made it too big, uh, takes a little bit more, takes a little of it. And then once we get it all set, we're going to let this sit overnight. And once it's done, or for an hour or so, you'll move it to your t back to your table. Um, in uh, your workbench, you'll snip off uh, what's left of the, the um, pins and, uh, of course, your string lengths that are additional, as I showed you. You're going to cut those off with a blade of some sort. The next side stop will be your, uh, you're going to need some of your burlap, and we're going to put the undercover on the boards. Undercover is just a way of controlling... Uh, covering up some of this stuff before you do the final uh, part. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Again, I'm still learning, so you're learning along with me. This, uh, I'm making this as a Christmas gift. Hopefully, the person that I'm sending to will enjoy. Um, happy Holidays to those of you uh, that ce celebrate a holiday of some sort during this time of year. Good luck. Um, stay safe. Stay healthy. We'll see you soon. Love y'all. Bye.